What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you the battle for week 6 of season 7 of the CPC and this week we are up against the last remaining undefeated in the league in Scoot and or Zamcro as you guys probably know him and his Blackmont Rykugers and before I get into anything just a reminder that if you guys like this video please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button as it helps us out a lot and let's do more cool stuff for you guys. But anyway, on to the, well, on to the matchup. So, like I said, we are up against Scoot, and last time we played him, he was not having the greatest season. I don't think he'd even won yet when we had played him last season. Well, this time, it is a complete reversal. Like, he is the last remaining undefeated in the league and is having a very, very good season with a really cool team. I mean, there are a couple unconventional mons like Mega Sceptile and Oracorio, and Oracorio has already put in the work this season. So yeah, Scoot is a very good player, so this is going to be a particularly tough matchup in my opinion. So I'm going to try to bust out a strategy that I haven't uh, used all season, and that is going to be Hazard Stack. So yeah, I mean, obviously you can see what the two hazard stack mons will be, but that's something that I really haven't brought a whole lot, um, particularly lately now that I have Charizard, where I'm very reliant on Defog in order to allow Charizard to function uh, at its highest potential. So the ability to kind of switch that up, not bring Charizard at all, and go for the hazard stack is really what I was going for. And looking at his team, Charizard is such a big threat that I'm really kind of hoping that he over preps for it so I can exploit that in other ways with the hazards like I talked about but also by going a little bit more special with the Gengar and the Raichu and I know that I said I'm going a little bit more special and there's a banded Tapu Koko looking at you but that is still beside the point. So yeah, looking at his team, he has a bunch of threats. He has Clefable, Azumarill is a little bit less of a threat given the mons that I have, like I have Skarmory, I have Tangrowth, I have Swampert, so really just the whole idea is to not let Azumarill set up on anything, and considering it isn't Z Azumarill, that should be a little bit easier to do at the very least. Uh, Mamoswine, I have a Skarmory, so I'm not overly worried about that thing. Greninja, just the effectiveness of Greninja just de is determined by the creativity of the person using it, and so Scoot, I'm sure, is going to come in with a Greninja set that is very effective in this matchup, although I'm anticipating Scarf, just because besides, like, besides just priority spam, there's not a whole lot he can do for Zardex besides a Scarf Greninja, but then again, not expecting anything. Mega Sceptile is a gigantic threat against me. Like, it outspeeds everything naturally. The only thing that I have to outspeed it on this team is going to be my Raichu, and Tangrowth is going to be relied upon to take hits from that thing, so it's just going to be a very tricky matchup, but I think if I can pressure it well enough, I should be in a good spot. Snorlax, Curselax is always a threat, um, but I do have a Gengar and a Swampert and Skarmory that can deal with that thing. And then Embor, Rotom, and Oracorio. Embor is actually a threat against me, unfortunately, so I will have to be watching out for that. But like I said, against his team, I'm going to go with the Hazard Stack option because his removal is Torn and Rotom, and I think Oracorio gets Defog as well. But I mean, like, those three are his removal. So I'm just going to try to pressure the absolute crap out of him with hazards and then have momentum in the form of Coco and Raichu in this case to where he'll have to repeatedly switch in and hopefully I can exploit the hazards as much as possible. So the first mod I'm bringing obviously is the Tapu Koko that you've been looking at for about four minutes now and it's going to be a banded set with U-Turn, Wild Charge, Iron Head, and Nature's Madness. Now this was a set that I was really trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to bring. Obviously, I wanted to bring U-Turn because he has a Mamoswine, and I wanted to bring Wild Charge because of Clefable, and this is a way of taking on a Calm Mind Clefable that tries to set up on me. Wild Charge can just be like, yeah, screw your Calm Minds, I'm gonna hit you insanely hard. So that's really the whole idea behind this Tapu Koko, and the fact that he has some pretty solid switch-ins. Like, Mamoswan is pretty solid if it has a Rindo Berry, uh, Snorlax can be, Bronzong can be as well. So I just wanted to get momentum, but also hit them as hard as possible while getting momentum, hence the band. And then Wild Charge, like I said, for the Clefable, but also it's very nice against his team if Sceptile is not mega yet. Iron Head is for Mamoswine and Clefable, mainly Mamoswine to just try to take that thing out. And then the last move. I was trying to figure out the best move for it. I ended up with Nature's Madness, 
And I'll be honest, I'm doing the team builder after I've already played the game. But I mean, looking back on this team, like this isn't a reflection of what I was of what happened in the game. But I was kind of w wishing that I well, I mean, I'm not wishing looking back. I should have put Brave Bird over Nature's Madness. But at the time of building this team, I just kind of wanted a I just wanted an option that could hit the Snorlax hard. Maybe proc its berry immediately so that it would have to waste a turn recycling, getting me free switch ins or it's just an immediate 50 percent off on whatever comes in. But yeah, that's what Nature's Madness is for. Just a move that I can just go for and guaranteed get 50 percent off on something. The speed is to creep Ren creeping Coco that is creeping Torn. So yeah, just Torn, then Coco would out would creep Torn, Coco or Gren would creep the Coco creeping Torn, and then this Coco creeps all of that. So that's what the speed is for. The rest is into it maxed out my attack and threw it through the rest into HP. Next up we have a modest life orb sub split Gengar, and this thing absolutely goes to town on his team. Like if I'm able to get a substitute up, things kinda sorta just die. And also with Snorlax being a typical switch in to Gengar, like being able to take care of it. With Cursed Body, Sub, and Pain Split, unless he's running both like Crunch and Earthquake, this Gengar can really, can potentially beat the Snorlax 1v1 in the right situation, especially given that I am modest and life or because of his speed tiers, I'm able to run the modest. And so, yeah, this Gengar just does not have any switch ins on his team, and bringing it in at the right moment is going to be. Is, I feel like is going to ultimately determine how this game goes. Uh, actually, I forgot to explain the EV spread. The speed is enough to creep Rotom, and then the HP, I just hit a Life Orb number and threw the rest into defense. Not very, not very like complex, just kind of a straightforward outspeed when I need to, and max at, maximize my EVs otherwise. Next up is going to be my Mega Sceptile Answer, as I really don't have a particularly good one on my team, as my fire type is weak to Dragon and is outsped by Sceptile. Um, my Steel type Skarmory does not have the greatest special defense, even though I could run a Spidef Skarm in order to try to take that thing on a little bit better. But we'll have to, yeah, Skarm is gonna be needed for Mamoswine, obviously. So Tangrowth with Regenerator and Assault Vest should sufficiently be able to take on the Sceptile. The spread that, or the moves that I'm going with are Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, Knockoff, and Rock Tomb. Sludge Bomb, obviously, for the Mega Sceptile, but also for the Clefable and Azumarill, just in case, and also just spamming Sludge Bomb is a nice way to potentially get poisons off on stuff. Giga Drain is for the Mamoswine if I need to, because I mean, I can potentially take a hit because Tangrowth is so thick naturally. If it's not like a banded Mammal, even a banded Mammal, maybe if I'm f at full, I can potentially take one. I'm not 100% sure on that calc just because I didn't bother calcing it as Tangrowth is not going to be staying in against Mamoswine. I'm going straight into Skarmory or Swampert on that thing, just not sacking my Tangrowth there. But yeah, Tangrowth is very, very fat. The Spideff is enough to avoid a two-hit KO from Modest Dragon Pulse after Rocks. Dragon Pulse does more than Hidden Power Fire. Knockoff is for Bronzong, and the Brock Tomb is just something that, if I'm not sure what's going to come in, I can go ahead and Rock Tomb, like on the, potentially the Torn trying to come in on a Giga Drain, something to that effect. And yeah, just the Spideff is enough to avoid a 2 hit KO from Modest Dragon Pulse after Rocks. I threw 4 into Special Attack just because the 4 right there is a jump point. Like it does, I think, 0.8 more percent at least. So it was just kind of one of those things It was like, eh, 4 EVs for an extra 0.8 percent. Why not just go ahead and do it? Here we have my dedicated Mamoswine answer in Skarmory. Wow, I need to speed this up. I've been talking for way too long. With the first part of my hazard stacking core with Roost, Iron Head, Spikes, and Whirlwind, just a very, very, very straightforward set. The defense is enough to avoid a two-hit KO from Banded Mamoswine's uh, Icicle Crash after Rocks. Spikes, obviously, because hazard stack. Whirlwind so that I can deal with like a Curse Lax or even just shuffle things around to try to get more residual damage off on stuff. And even like a Cosmic Power or Calm Mind Clef, I can Whirlwind that out and then Roost, obviously, for being able to, you know, recover up. And Ironhead just kind of seemed like the best option against his team, particularly because this thing's trying to take out Mamoswine. I could go with Brave Bird, but I opted for Ironhead just because of Clef and Mamoswine. I would like to be able to hit those things a little bit harder, and the flinch chance is always nice as well, but that's not what I'm going for with this set. The rounding out 
<laughs> the rounding out wow um rounding out my hazard stat core is going to be a roar stealth rock swampert with scald and protect this thing is just going to be my way of you know being fat just get up rocks so i can run spikes on skarmory this thing is nice for embor as otherwise my team is absolutely decimated by embor so it makes embor kind of think twice about j about clicking flare blitz or locking itself into flare blitz potentially the defense on this set is enough to live a plus six aqua jet after rocks from an azumarill so that i can potentially get a scald burn off and then protect is going to be for scouting out embor sets greninja sets uh z moves really whatever he wants to go for i can just use swamper to protect to scout that out i mean it's swamper and it's protect you guys already know how that is and then roar similarly along with the whirlwind on skarmory just shuffle things around get more residual hazards damage and finally is going to be my sweeper in alolan raichu with volt switch hp ice focus blast and thunderbolt with phytinium z phytinium z of course is going to be for the snorlax just to be able to get rid of that thing as without snorlax his team is hit insanely hard by alolan raichu the speed is enough to outspeed Mamo naturally so that I don't have to worry about, like, I don't I don't need terrain for Raichu to outspeed a non-scarfed Mamo, which also outspeeds Scarf Greninja, which was kind of the benchmark I was going for, but when I realized that I was that close, I just went ahead and went for that. And then Bolt Switch, Thunderbolt, HP Ice, and Focus Blast, just so I can get momentum with Alolan Raichu, but also have a little bit stronger of an electric move should I need it. So yeah, that is the team, and let's just go ahead and hop right on over to the battle. Alrighty, here we are in the battle, and the first thing I'm noticing is that he brought zero form of hazard control, so I want to get my spikes and stealth rock up ASAP just to try to deal with his team as quickly as possible, just put on the pressure, and I think that Gengar can win late if I'm able to get rid of Greninja and Sceptile and potentially wear down Snorlax a little bit. But like I said in the team builder, this Gengar is designed that in the right situation, it can 1v1 a Snorlax. So that's going to be my game plan. Just get my hazards up, Raichu, or wear down Snorlax a little bit, and then try to win with either Gengar or Raichu. So I'm going to end up leading off with my Skarmory, as I really wasn't sure what he was going to lead off with. I thought he'd try to lead off with Mamoswine or Bronzong to get up rocks immediately. And he goes and he leads off with his Greninja. And like I said, I'm thinking that this Greninja is Scarfed based on how weak his team is to Charizard X. And his way of revenging might be tried to be, or might try to be a modest Greninja with Hydro Pump to where if Charizard chips itself down, then Greninja will be able to revenge kill it. So I'm just going to scout out, see what type of Greninja this is, go straight into my Swampert as he actually just goes straight for the Taunt. So that tells me that this is immediately not a Choice Scarf Greninja, which is fantastic for me, meaning that Coco can switch in. I didn't want to lead with Coco, even though I was kind of a no drawback against his team overall, as I was thinking he would probably lead with Scarf Greninja and I would still have to switch out into Swampert anyway, or he might lead with Mamoswine and I wouldn't want to risk a Scarf Earthquake knocking me out from the get-go. So I just figured Skarm was the better lead in that case. And so Swampert comes in, gets taunted, that is fine with me. So what I'm going to do is obviously switch my Swampert out, as all I can do is just Scald at this point, go into my Tapu Koko, and fire off a U-turn as that will be able to KO... The Greninja and he goes for Toxic and that miss really sucks just because he would be immediately able to get some chip off on my Tapu Koko and it would obviously be Toxic so every time I came in I would take a little bit more so I'll come back to this later but either way he misses the Toxic this does mean I get to fire off a free U-turn um, on the Bronzong it comes in shows that it is fully spit off its max HP but does not have any defense investment at all based on that damage. So I'm just going to go immediately try to get up my spikes. I was thinking about rocks or spikes, but I decided in this situation that spikes were a little bit better as with Skarmory in on Bronzong, it guaranteed me two layers, which I did get as he goes into his Embor and I considered roosting. I considered just trying to scout out what type of Embor this might be as I would be at full, I had my Sturdy still intact, so Skarmory would be able to take any one-hit Ember, 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 Ember wanted to go for, and I'd be able to potentially roost it off. I would still be pretty low if it was like a banded Flare Blitz, but at least I would know what it was. So, but I'm just going to go into my Swampert, thinking that he might just try to go immediately for a Flare Blitz, but he does make a very good play. Goes out for an all-out pummeling with Superpower, 
and that does a crap load to my Swampert. And so I'm just like, uh, crap, this is bad. So I'm going to protect, try to see if he has Grass Knot, as he makes a very good play, goes into his Greninja as my Protect fails. And now I'm going to scout out this Greninja once again, just go for another Protect, get up a little bit more so I can potentially live a Flare Blitz after Rocks. But he goes for Spikes, so this is a Spikes Greninja. And so I'm just like, oh, crap, this is bad. So I'm going to go into my Tapu Koko once again, get Momentum, you turn off on this Greninja, get rid of that thing potentially, as he does just go for the taunt, so I do get him on this play, but now he has rocks and spikes up, and I have two layers of spikes, and I'm just going to go straight for the banded U-turn as Mamoswine comes in, I get a crit, but really not a huge deal as Skarmory walls this thing endlessly regardless, and so I'm just going to go straight into my Skarmory, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and fire off an Iron Head as it damaged the Mamoswine, and I mean, going for my last spike, I mean, if he had brought in Embor, it would have gotten in a little bit of damage, goes into Greninja, that reveals that this Greninja is actually ridiculously defensive, so I was like, huh, well, that's interesting to say the least, but with Greninja in, I mean, at least it got a little bit more damage off on it, I could have gone for my last spike, but again, like I said, I wanted to get a tiny bit more chip on that Embor in order to put it more likely in range of spikes that had just had less spike switch-ins, particularly if it has Flare Blitz in the back. So now, I know that he has Taunt, he knows that I know he has Taunt, so instead of switching out or just attacking, I'm going to go straight for the Whirlwind, try to bring in something that I can take advantage of, and luckily I do bring in the Bronzong, so what this means is I am guaranteed my last layer of Spike. So he does bring in his Embor, and instead of going for the Iron Head again, I just decided to go for the Spike, as it was really just free. Mamoswine, earlier, I wanted to get rid of that thing if he stayed in, because then that meant that Wild Charge was just a free KO on pretty much anything on his team with the spikes I had up, but with Bronzong in, Ironhead would have been doing jack, I could have gone for a Whirlwind to try to bring in something else, but Skarmory in against Bronzong is exactly what I wanted, so I just took that opportunity to get up my last spike, so anytime that I roared or Whirlwinded later in the game, I would just be in a much better position. So even though my Skarmory, like, I'm finally going to do what I wanted to do earlier with Skarmory, um, and that is staying against the Embor because I know that it is Z fighting. I know that it is a physical Z fighting. So I know that I can take any hit this Embor wants to go for. I don't want to sack off my Swampert just yet, as it has the potential to get up Stealth Rock. And Stealth Rock plus three layers of spikes against him would be absolutely invaluable. So I'm going to stay in. He makes the play, the good play of Flare Blitzing. I mean, that would have killed anything. Swampert's low enough that coming in on two spikes and rocks would kill it. And as long as I bring in the Bronzong or the Snorlax, I can heal up on them. Mamoswine, depending on its set, will be able to knock me out, and I'm assuming that it is going to be a max attack Mamoswine. So I need Bronzong or Snorlax to come be brought in, as I do bring in the Bronzong. I would have liked Snorlax to get a little bit of spikes damage on that thing, but you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm not complaining. I do get the chance to roost up again, and now I am still a switch in to his Mamoswine, and Embor is getting lower and lower, chipped by Flare Blitz and Spikes. So I'm going to go into my Tangrowth. I was kind of trying to debate what I wanted to go for. I could have gone for another Whirlwind, but I thought that he might try to taunt my Skarmory, as I had shown that I would stay in, but he makes the good play in Spikes. I mean, really, just any time Greninja was in against Skarmory, it was kind of a 50-50. I thought that it was inherently in his favor to go for the taunt, uh, just because, I mean, it kind of covered whether I wanted to roost again, whether I wanted to spike again, and he would also be able to taunt whatever came in, but he does make the very good play of spiking. So now I have three spikes up. He has three spikes and rocks. So this is a game of hazard stack, which I actually found kind of cool. But now that tank growth is in, I'm going to go straight for the Giga Drain. I have no idea what this uh, Greninja's last move is. I was thinking that it was going to be a water move, and it turned out to be Hydro Pump later. So we are able to finally take out the Greninja, but not until it gets all layers of spikes up. So he comes into his Embor, and this thing is going to be dead on rocks. So now I'm just going to sack off my Swampert. I'm like, you know what? The dream of getting rocks up is not going to happen. I need to just sack that thing off as it's not going to be helpful in any situation. And Embor does just kill it with a Flare Blitz, but now... Like I said, Embor is guaranteed dead to its own is guaranteed dead to spikes when it comes in later. So I'm gonna go into my Tapu Koko, and this is kind of a crossroads of the game. So first of all, that 6% that he would have gotten in, he would have gotten on Toxic on my Tapu Koko earlier would have been great for this situation because that means that Tapu Koko, once it came in just now, it would just stay in until it died. Like it would not be able to come back in on rocks again. 
But because of that, I well because I did not take that damage, I am able to bring my Coco in. And instead of going straight for like a wild charge, I wanted to go for U-turn, but that wouldn't knock it out. I'm actually gonna go straight for the Iron Head, as that covered Mamoswine coming in, it covered Sceptile coming in, and if I locked myself into wild charge, like he has enough information to know that I'm banded. If I lock myself into wild charge, that is a free switch into Sceptile, and Sceptile, I can all but guarantee that that thing is sub, especially the way he's playing it. He's keeping it in the back. He's keeping it to try to sweep me. A sub seed set, would have been brought out earlier or just an odd attacking set would probably have brought, been brought out earlier to try to break my team but he's keeping Sceptile in the back to try to win the game so I am all but guaranteeing that that thing is sub as it, all it needs is just three attacks in order to take out my team so I don't want to give that thing a free sub so that's why I'm just going to go straight for the Iron Head it can potentially knock out the Embor and if it doesn't well Embor is probably going to go for Flare Blitz and knock itself out and then I can just go into Raichu who has a very good situation it can potentially take out the well, it can heavily damage the Bronzong, hit the Sceptile, knock it out, knock out the Mamoswine, knock out the Embor. So, I mean, even if he had stayed in and knocked me out as he knocked himself out with Recoil, I would have just gone into Raichu and tried to pressure his team from there. But he does actually pull the switch into Snorlax, saving the Embor sack for later, as Iron Head does enough to show me that this is going to be a max, max Snorlax. I'm assuming that this was his way of dealing with Charizard. And so knowing that I can set up the terrain later with my Coco because of the Toxicness, very unfortunate for him, um, I am going to go straight into my Skarmory, take whatever hit the Snorlax wants to go for, and roost up so that I am at max HP to switch into Mamoswine 100%. Even a banded Icicle Crash from Mamoswine will not be able to do it, Kaomi, but he does get the chance to go into his Sceptile, and this is really bad. So right here, I'm thinking that Sceptile is immediately going to go for he's probably going to go for like an hp fire or a substitute either way i wanted to go into my tangrowth and i make a bit of a misplay right here so well not really a misplay it was just kind of it was an iffy play so if coco was lower i would just whirlwind with my skarmory right here as i would just be able to blow the Sceptile into something else, it would have to come back in on spikes, and then hopefully, depending on what he went into, HP Fire would not do enough to where I could roost up on Snorlax, Bronzong, or Mamoswine, so as long as I just didn't get in Embor, Skarmory would still be able to roost up on those things, so I wasn't overly worried about that. But because Tangrowth is at a decent amount, well, because Coco still has one more time to come in, I want to save the Electric Terrain for my Raichu later, so... If he went for sub, Tangrowth would be able to come in. I do go into my Tangrowth. Tangrowth would be able to come in and break the sub going for Sludge Bomb, and I would try to revenge it with my Raichu later. But if he just straight up attacked, Tangrowth would be 2 at KO'd, blah, blah, blah. So that's exactly what I'm going to go into. And this was just kind of a really... And this was just kind of a sketchy-ish play that really doesn't end up working out for me all that well as he does go for the hidden power and it's going to be a two at KO so at this point I'm just like ah oh, crap I have to sack my Tangrowth to the Sceptile and then I will have to sack Tapu Koko in order to get the terrain back up for Raichu so that was a really sketchy situation that I was super worried about but luckily for me he goes for a substitute and I am able to break that meaning my terrain will wear out to this turn so that all I have to do is sack my Tapu Koko. So Tangrowth is low. It's probably going to get knocked out. I've shown that I'm going to stay in and go for a Sludge Bomb, and he probably thinks I'm just going to sack off the Tangrowth. But instead, what I'm going to do this turn is sack off my Tapu Koko so that I do live on the 2%. Again, the Toxic would have made it so I died. But I'm going to sack my Tapu Koko, get the Electric Terrain back up, and now take this opportunity to go into my Raichu and really, really pressure his team. So as soon as I can take out the Sceptile, I don't need the Electric Terrain anymore, as Raichu is going to be able to outspeed everything else naturally, thanks to the investment that I put in for Mamoswine. Goes into Bronzong. I know I'm not going to be able to one-shot that thing even with the Z Fighting, and I want to save the Z Fighting for the Snorlax. And I have a guaranteed switch in with my Skarmory, so I'm just going to go straight into that thing and just start whirlwinding stuff around. I don't know what this Bronzong set is, as he does reveal Earthquake. So he is Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Trick Room, and I'm not sure what his last move is. I think he might have revealed it, but I mean, he reveals it coming up. I whirlwind him into Embor. That doesn't really matter, as Embor was just kind of a sack anyway. And he goes into his Snorlax, goes for the Fire Punch. I am content with just whirlwinding stuff around. 
Like, if Snorlax wanted to start cursing, I would be able to get to uh, wear that thing down even more. If it wanted to rest, well, then it has to come in with rest turns as the Bronzong does reveal Toxic at this point. And I'm just going to go for the Iron Head, try to wear out the Trick Room a little bit. I just wanted to wear out this one turn so that when I Whirlwinded something in, uh, the Trick Room would be worn out. So if I Whirlwind in Snorlax, which I do right here, I have the chance to knock it out with an Iron Head, although I do need a flinch in order to do that. But right here, I'm obviously going to go for the Iron Head. What I want is to force Snorlax to rest. If Snorlax rests, with the max defense and max HP that it is shown to be, my Gengar, my modest Gengar, plus my Z fighting modest Raichu will be able to beat that thing because it doesn't have any Spadef. Yeah, Snorlax has a just a healthy amount of Spadef anyway, but Gengar, modest Life Orb Gengar, and Phytanium Z Raichu will be able to beat that thing if it is locked in or if it's forced to just randomly go for moves, and then also my subsplit Gengar will be able to beat this thing 1v1 or at least wear it down into Raichu range later in the game. So that's ultimately what I'm going to go for. Just try to make, force the Snorlax to rest so that I can take advantage of its sleeping later. And so I'm just going to go for the Iron Head hoping that he'll rest and I actually end up getting the flinch, which really sucks given that he doesn't even have the chance to rest and we don't have a chance to go into that end game as that was pretty much GG. Like once I knocked out Snorlax, Mamoswine can't do crap to me and Bronzong showed that it is completely walled by my Skarmory. So I mean like, yeah, that really sucks, but I did think that I had the ability to beat that Snorlax late game with my Gengar with especially with Pain Split and Life Orb sl Modest Sludge Wave being able to do a sizable chunk to that Snorlax but regardless, we're not going to go into that, or we don't have to go into that end game, as we do just flinch the Snorlax, and yeah, Mamoswine and Bronzong will be able to do nothing to my Skarmory, as Skarmory will be able to clean up the game from there. So, yeah, I mean, that was a... So, okay, I want to go over the hacks that happened in the game. First of all, I want to very much acknowledge that I was lucky in terms of what got whirlwinded in. Like, definitely lucky uh, that I got the Bronzong in when I needed Skarmory. Uh, to bring in something slower so that I could roost up. Was lucky there. The Toxic Miss was so early in the game that it just completely changed how the game would have played out. I am, I'll be, I'll admit, I am the first person to call hacks. I am the first person to complain about it. I'm the first person to say that it changed the game and I would have won without it. Like, I get so salty over hacks, so it'd be insanely hypocritical of me to not acknowledge when something goes my way and that toxic 1 billion percent changed the changed the way the game the progression of the game like i'm not saying that i still had it won and i'm not saying that he had it won i'm just saying that the toxic miss happened so early that it completely changed how the game would have played out and definitely putting me in a better position and him in a worse position the crit on the mamoswine didn't really matter because skarmory still walled it insanely and the and the uh what is it the flinch on Snorlax, that was the last one. Mattered potentially in terms of differential, but I still had the ability to beat it with Raichu and Gengar late game, just being able to outspeed it and take it out with two very strong special hits. So, yeah, Toxic completely changed the complexion of the game. That's the word I was looking for. And I am not denying that, Scoot. I am very, very sorry that our game really was changed so early by that toxic miss and so we are able to defeat the last undefeated team in the league and we move to five and one so on a little bit of a five game win streak since we lost our first game and we're looking to keep that going so i hope you guys enjoyed watching like comment subscribe all that good stuff and this is sticks signing out why not see you guys